comment, and subscribe for more content. Where's the notification bell? It's to the right of you. Oh. What's up, guys? Welcome to this edition of a Funko Popcast. I'm DK Wrestler. And I'm MD Shady. And it is an insane podcast that we have for you guys today because we have a lot of the Funko Fair 2021 reveals. We also have our top 10 Funko Pops list for the month of January 2021. And for this podcast, we will be discussing, of course, the remaining pops for day two of Funko Fair because we didn't get to talk about all of that last week. And then, like we said last week, we'll talk about day three to day six of reveals. And as we are recording this, day seven, which is animation day, is currently happening right now. So without further ado, we'll kick off by talking about the Funko Fair 2021 day two reveals, or at least the remaining reveals for anime day, which kicks off with a set of Bakugan reveals, which the set we have here, we have Runo, Dan, Shun, Drago, Storm, Skystress, and Tigera with an exclusive two pack of Ajit and Pharaoh that will be a Target exclusive. And these are expected to release as early as April 2021. One. Then we got ourselves a brand new wave of One Piece Funko Pops, which this set we have ourselves Sabu, Crocodile, Luffy in Kimono, Brook, and Rorana Zoro, with exclusive pops of a metallic Luffy in Kimono, which will be exclusive to Hot Topic, and a fourth gear Luffy or Luffy that will be exclusive to Child's Collectibles. And those are expected to release as early as May 2021. And then last but not least for this anime portion, we have ourselves what's called Vocaloid Funko Pops, which we got ourselves Mergarine Luka, Hatsune Miku, and then a Cherry Blossom Hatsume Miku that will be exclusive to Hot Topic. And those are expected to be released as early as April 2021. So kicking off with the Bakugan Funko Pops, which I've noticed and I've read some of the comments that the common set of pops are actually from the original Bakugan and the two pack is from the rebooted Bakugan, which you can also tell because of the different style logos that they use in the glam shots that we have going on here, which this is not a bad set. I like how Funko is expanding on different animes and not, well, I mean, I can't say not continuing Dragon Ball Z and My Hero Academia and all that because we did talk about Dragon Ball Z Funko Pops for Funko fair reveals last week so it's cool that they're expanding on different ones that people may have been requesting for a while now i do like the drago i think it is the red dragon i think a lot of people are hyped for that one also i do like the tiger also that one looks really cool but i do really like the two pack that you got for the target exclusive especially the sphinx looks really nice it's not a bad set Now we got ourselves the One Piece Pops, which these are some insanely detailed pops. And I know there's a lot of hype because we haven't had like a full on set of One Piece Pops in at least a couple years now. I don't know the name of the character, or at least I can't remember, but it's the character with the green hair and he's got like a sword in his mouth and two different swords. There's also the character that has a hook and like a tornado in his hand. And then he's got a cigar. Looks really nice, but I think the best looking pop has to be the Chow's Collectibles exclusive one. I think the detail on that looks insane. And then we got ourselves Vocaloid Funko Pops, which I don't think Vocaloid is actually a anime. I think I quickly searched it up recently and Vocaloid was this like vocal synthesizer product. And like there's characters that are kind of like mascots or something involved with that. And these are like a few of them from what I know of. So I guess that's all right. They do got some cool detail with the hair going on. Starting off with Bakugan, yeah, these are cool. It's kind of like a little throwback to uh, like the late childhood, I guess, with Bakugan. Didn't really collect many of them, but I definitely do like this set, and I might get a couple of them. And I do like, what'd you say his name is, Drago? Yeah. Yeah, I could see how there'd be hype around that pop, considering that is kind of like the face of the company. It's, It's your Pikachu, it's your Agumon, it's your dark magician basically so that's really cool i do like this set maybe i'll pick up all of them i've kind of yet to decide new one piece pops these are cool i actually was playing a guy in nhl last night and his name on there was luffy d monkey so i was like okay this guy's clearly a one piece fan so it's kind of funny that we're now talking about one piece pops 
these all look really really good i really like the character oh, i forget what his name is the afro guy i've watched a few episodes of one piece i haven't decided if i'm going to continue with it then these vocaloid pops these are cool i really like these my cousin actually used to dress up as the one with the blue hair for fan expo might have to get my hands on a couple of those all right, so now we're going to move on to day three of Funko Fair 2021 reveals, which was sports and games, which kicking off a set of Assassin's Creed Valhalla pops, which is just two variants of the same character, which I think is pronounced Evior, which there is a normal variant of Evior, and then there's like an Evior with double axe, which will be an EB game slash GameStop exclusive, and those are expected to release as early as February 2021. Then we got ourselves confirmed, finally, the highly anticipated new wave of Pokemon Pops, which we got ourselves Meowth, Attack Stance Pikachu, Psyduck, and a Silver Metallic Bulbasaur, in which those are expected to release as early as April 2021. Then we got ourselves Sekiro from the Sekiro Shadows Die Twice video game, in which that is going to be released as early as February 2021. And then we got ourselves a wave of pops that I'm excited for. It's a brand new wave of WWE pops, which we got ourselves first a Stone Cold versus The Rock pop in ring moments, followed by a set of common four inch pops, which we got ourselves Edge, China, Drew McIntyre, Otis with the Money in the Bank briefcase, and Stone Cold Steve Austin with a championship belt along with exclusive pops of a Walmart-exclusive Mankind vs. The Rock 2-pack. And then we got ourselves an Eddie Guerrero pop and pin bundle that will be exclusive to EB Games slash GameStop, and a Stone Cold Steve Austin with two belts that will be exclusive to 7-Eleven. And those are expected to release as early as February 2021. Then we got ourselves a wave of NBA Legends Pops, which the set that we have here, we have George Jervin of the San Antonio Spurs, Hakeem Olajuwon of the Houston Rockets, Julius Irving of the New York Nets, Dominique Wilkins of the Atlanta Hawks, and then we got ourselves Isaiah Thomas of the Detroit Pistons, Allen Iverson of the Philadelphia 76ers, Scottie Pippen of the Chicago Bulls, Dennis Rodman of the Chicago Bulls, and then we have a Funko Shop exclusive Michael Jordan in his NBA All-Stars gear, in which those are expected to release as early as April 2021. Then we got ourselves here a new wave of MLB Funko Pops, which once again, I'm probably going to botch a lot of these names. But first off, we got ourselves Javier Baez of the Chicago Cubs, Fernando Tatis Jr. of the San Diego Padres, Christian Yellick of the Milwaukee Brewers, Corey Seager of the Los Angeles Dodgers, Ozzy Albies of Atlanta Braves, Kettle Marte of the Arizona Diamondbacks, Whit Merrifield of the Kansas City Royals, Jarrett Cole of the New York Yankees, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. of the Toronto Blue Jays, Jose Barrios of the Minnesota Twins, Mookie Betts of the Los Angeles Dodgers, Steven Starsberg of the Washington Nationals, Cody Bellinger of the Los Angeles Dodgers, Pete Alonso of the New York Mets, and Anthony Randon of the Los Angeles Angels, which those are expected to release as early as March 2021. So kicking off with Assassin's Creed Pops, which these aren't too bad. I know that is the newest Assassin's Creed game, I believe, that's, I think, exclusive to the PS5. So I think if you have a PS4, you can't get this game, if I'm not mistaken. I know people were kind of complaining in the comments that there's like a girl version of this character, and they're mad that they didn't make the girl version also, instead of the fact that we have two of the same guy version, which I kind of agree. So they should have just scrapped one of them. It probably would have been the one axe that I probably would have scrapped scrapped and then kept the one with the two acts then we got ourselves the pokemon pops which i'm excited but i'm not excited about this because we got two great pops but we got two mediocre to crappy pops so of course i'll start off with getting the crappiest one over and done with that silver metallic bulbasaur I am not a fan, obviously, of the silver metallic chrome pops, whatever they are. I know they're probably making these to honor Pokemon's 25th anniversary. I'm not really a biggest fan of that. The Attack Stance Pikachu is not the greatest either. They literally took the head sculpt from the Grumpy Pikachu and then made kind of a newer body where it's on all fours ready to attack. This could have been better if they would have added possibly a lightning base and possibly made it glow in the dark. I think that would have been way better for this, but the fact that it's just by itself and nothing really going on i'm not really the fan of it 
And then, of course, we have Meowth and Psyduck, which a lot of people are really hyping over Psyduck. I'm not really hyping over Psyduck, not because I'm not a fan of Psyduck. I think it's the fact that it's a little plain, but at the same time, you can't really do much with Psyduck as it is, so it's understandable. But Meowth. Meowth is amazing. I have been wanting a Meowth pop for quite a while now. It's on my top list of like wants for the Pokemon set. It's very underrated because a lot of the hype went towards Psyduck, but this pop is awesome. The mouth is awesome. I wish though that it was the white eyes with like a black stripe to make his actual eyes, but I'm totally perfectly fine with the black eyes because not only is that the normal pop eyes, but it does look very nicely and it probably would have looked better than just having white eyes by itself. And I'm not going to be getting this one. There is a reason why, but I think MD might be able to answer this when he will talk about these. Then we got Sekiro. This is a pretty detailed pop, especially the scarring on the top of his face. I think it looks really nice. And now we go with the WWE Funko Pops. Oh, so good. I'm excited for this in-ring moments. It's something that I've been wanting Funko to do for such a long time as terms to the WWE set. And it's so refreshing. I think the perfect two candidates for this in-ring moments was Stone Cold versus The Rock because that may be like one of, if not the most popular rivalry in WWE history between literally what people could consider either the number one or number two stars of the Attitude Era or equally the number one star of the Attitude Era. My biggest question about this is, are they glued to the ring match? Or will the ring act as a stand and you're able to like twist it and remove it off and then put other superstars in the ring? Because I think that would be cool. And I'm excited for potential other in-ring moments, especially if you have different style rings. Like if you had a WrestleMania ring, a Royal Rumble ring. Then we got ourselves the five common four inch pops. Edge looks pretty good, honestly, even though that it is current edge. So it's more of older edge. It's still a nice looking pop. China looks pretty nice. Drew McIntyre looks pretty cool also. Otis is also awesome. He's the first ever Funko Pop with the Money in the Bank briefcase, and I think they did a great job with him. A lot of people hate Otis, but I love Otis, and I'm definitely going to be getting this. Then we got ourselves the Rock and Mankind 2-pack, which I do want to put this out there for anyone who keeps calling this the Rock and Sock Connection 2-pack. That is not what this is. This is just Mankind versus The Rock in like a feud two pack. And I can tell you guys exactly why. First off, if it was a Rock and Sock two pack, shouldn't Mankind have a Mr. Socko on his hand? And number two, this exact Rock figure has the WWE Championship. And this is supposed to be for their 1999 Royal Rumble I Quit match. Then we got Eddie Guerrero, which it has been a long time coming. Finally, we get an Eddie Guerrero pop, and it looks very, very nice. I love the way that his head sculpt is, especially the way they did like the dark hair with like the blondish tips. I think they did such a great job with that. It's cool that it comes with the WrestleMania 20 pin. That's a huge reason why I want it. I'm kind of liking this idea of like a pop and pin for these WWE pops, but at the same time, I don't. And it's at EB Games slash GameStop, which is like the easiest retailer for us, at least, except the fact that they're closed right now because pandemic restrictions. And then we got ourselves the 7-Eleven exclusive Stone Cold Steve Austin. I like it, but I don't like it. I like it because it's got a couple belts and the fact that it's got a 7-Eleven exclusive sticker, or it will, but a lot of people were complaining because of the last couple of exclusives that 7-Eleven had. The NBA pops, these aren't too bad. The only ones that I really know of are, of course, Michael Jordan, and then you got Scottie Pippen and Dennis Rodman, which props to Funko for making a Dennis Rodman, especially because we had the video we posted on our channel called Celebrities Who Don't Have a Funko Pop But Should, and the person I put on there was Dennis Rodman is one of them, and now they finally made a Dennis Rodman, and the fact that he has multicolor hair is awesome. Expect there to be more Dennis Rodmans with repaints of different hairstyles to happen. Yeah, definitely think Dennis Rodman is the best one of this set. And then the baseball pops, the MLB pops, I'm not really going to talk about these because I literally don't know any of these players except Vladimir Guerrero Jr. And even with that, we already have a Vladimir Guerrero Jr. pop with the white attire, and now they have like the gray attire. I guess that's all right, but at the same time, I feel like there's more than just Vladimir Guerrero Jr. for the Toronto Blue Jays. We have the new Assassin's Creed pops. And yeah, like what is going on with this GameStop exclusive? I mean, I like that pop, but then the common is quite literally almost exactly the same thing. It's like a bad chase version almost. And yeah, if there was a female character, I don't see why they wouldn't have just made a pop of her as the exclusive and had the common be the dual machete kind of deal. 
then we have these Pokemon Pops. Yeah, really, this is a wave of two Pops, in my opinion, because another Pikachu. Like, okay, what can I say that I haven't said before? I understand Pikachu is going to sell, but come on. Like if you're going to give us a Pikachu and another silver pop, give us a wave that has like two more pops in it as well. And I really think it's about time that they start giving us at least one human character in each wave, mostly because I'd really, really love to see a Jesse and James go with that Meowth. I love the Meowth. It's my favorite out of this lineup. The Psyduck is good, but I think there's just always something about Psyduck's eyes that kind of give him his character and having the pop eyes just kind of takes away from that. Plus, not very often do you see a Psyduck with his arms down to the side like that. He's normally holding his headached head. So I think that'd be kind of hard to do because pop heads are obviously huge, but I don't know. It's just not as good as the Meowth. The Meowth is really good. And I don't know the reason why you don't want to buy this. So let's hear it. The reason that I'm not going to buy the Meowth pop is because I think it's perfectly predictable that we will be getting a flocked Meowth at some point in 2021. So why buy the common when you get a Comic-Con exclusive that's probably going to be flocked and will probably look better than the common? Yeah, okay, that's fair. Then this Kiro Pop. This is all right. Yeah, I agree. The the scarring looks really good, actually. Then the WWE Pops. These are wicked. Starting off, obviously, with the Moments Pop. Yeah, that's really cool. And it was interesting to hear your take on that, whether or not they will be secured to the base or if there's a peg. And if there's a peg, that opens up a lot of opportunities to have some cool different display pieces. Ah, that's interesting. I really hope there is a peg. And then for the actual common wave, we finally have my favorite wrestler of all time, the rated R superstar, the ultimate opportunist, Edge. Very, very cool. But I really, really wish we would have got like a 2006, 2007 era one with his trench coat on and maybe even give him the rated R spinner belt. That would have been super sick. The Otis is really cool as well. I like how they gave him the money in the bank, even though... He's not currently holding it, but that's fine. China's all right. Stone Cold, it's another Stone Cold. And then Drew McIntyre is actually probably one of my favorites out of this common set. I think he just has the most detail in my opinion, and I kind of like the way he's smirking. Then you have the Mankind and Rock 2-pack. I am in love with this. I, I love that Mankind pop. The Rock is pretty cool as well, but that Mankind, just a lot of detail on the mask. Even the clothes, how they're kind of tattered, just looks really, really great. But yeah, it's unfortunate that we don't see Mr. Sacco there. Then Eddie Guerrero, this is so cool as well. I love how you get the WrestleMania 20 pin with it. And then a Stone Cold 7-Eleven exclusive. This is cool how he has two belts, but it's another Stone Cold pop. He's kind of becoming Pikachu or Grogu now, as we can call him, of the WWE, where it's just they're mass producing Stone Cold pops. But I'm excited that it is 7-Eleven because I don't have a 7-Eleven sticker yet. And I feel like this should be the pop that I get because I'm pretty sure that 7-Eleven Rey Mysterio is like super expensive now. And then on another edition of correcting Dylan's botches for sports people's names. Here we have Hakeem Elijah Wan. <laughs> what did you call? I don't even remember. <laughs> it was like, hola, Juan. <laughs> Okay, had to get that out of the way. Yeah, these new basketball pops, these are pretty cool. I do like Akeem Olajuwon. I might end up getting that pop, but I really, really like the Scotty Pippen and the Dennis Rodman. I will definitely be getting those because they need to go right beside my Michael Jordans. And then Allen Iverson, that one's pretty cool too. Even Isaiah Thomas, like this whole wave, I guess if you could call it one whole wave, super cool. A lot of huge names there for sure. And then we have some more MLB pops. I mean, eh, there's no really new poses at all, which kind of is annoying. There's a couple cool ones in here. Like, I don't know about that Vlad. Yeah, it's just a color change on the jersey, not even a change of pose, I don't think. I think that's exactly what the other one looked like. All right, so now we're going to move on to day four reveals, which was an entire day of Marvel reveals in which I think every Funko fanatic can easily agree that this may have been the worst day of reveals ever. 
there's not a lot of pops to talk about as terms to new pops because at least two thirds of the Marvel Day announcements were re-announcements. We had WandaVision, we had the Luchador pops, we had the Falcon and Winter Soldier, except the one new one that we're going to talk about. For these pops, kicking off, we got ourselves a Stan Lee Street Art Pop Deluxe. This is available for pre-order now and is expected to release as early as February 2021, in which this will be an EB Game slash GameStop exclusive. Then we got ourselves the common wave of Miles Morales Pops, which we got ourselves here. Programmable Matter Suit, 2020 Suit, Crimson Cowl Suit, Winter Suit, Purple Rain Suit, Bodega Cat Suit, and Strike Suit, which these are expected to release as early as March 2021. Then we got a wave of Deadpool Funko Pops, which we got ourselves common pops of LARP Deadpool, Dino Pool, Flame Mecco Deadpool, Roman Senator Deadpool, Backyard Deadpool, Barista Deadpool. And then we got exclusive pops of Sherlock Deadpool, which we go into EB Game slash GameStop, Ballerina Deadpool, which we go into Hot Topic, and Construction Worker Deadpool, which we go into Walmart. And these are expected to release as early as February 2021. Then we have an entire wave of Marvel Infinity Warps pops, which we got ourselves two variants of Ghost Panther, which one is a common and the other will be a glow in the dark EB game slash GameStop exclusive. Three variants of Iron Hammer, a normal variant of Iron Hammer, a Target exclusive glow in the dark variant, and then a 10 inch Walmart exclusive variant. Funko Shop exclusive Hot Rocks, Madam Hay or Madam Hell, I don't know how to pronounce that name. Diamond Patch, Arachnite, two new variants of Soldier Supreme. One will be a common and one will be an Amazon Glow in the Dark exclusive. And then a Hot Topic exclusive Weapon Hex. And those are expected to release as early as May 2021. And then the last pop we'll talk about in this Marvel set is a flying variant of Falcon for the Falcon and Winter Soldier pops. Stan Lee. Oh man, I am f***ing heated over this one. Stan Lee is rolling in his grave right now <laughs> knowing that he has a street art pop deluxe why did this have to be a stan lee pop i feel bad but at least with this glam shot though it looks like it might be the best one so these common miles morales pops these are all right the two that i like the best are the crimson cowl suit and then the strike pose which would be the last one where it's got yellow on the attire i think those look really cool the Deadpool 30th anniversary pops. These are really cool. Deadpool does celebrate its 30th anniversary in February. So it makes sense that these pops will be releasing in February and also expect some Deadpool content to hit up the channel in February. My favorite one, and I think it's everyone's favorite Deadpool pop, is the Dino Pool. That thing looks so great. Infinity Warps. I didn't really know the concept of these when they originally released the three Walgreens Glow in the Dark exclusives, which already were Iron Hammer, Soldier Supreme, and then the Arachnite, which I think basically what's happening here is that they're meshing two different Marvel characters together to make like one character. So like Iron Hammer, that's Iron Man and Thor mixed together. And then Ghost Panther is Black Panther and Ghost Rider. A lot of these are really cool, especially I think the overall best one of this set has to be Hot Rocks. I don't really like the name, but I can totally understand it's the thing in Human Torch. And then we got ourselves the Falcon and Winter Soldier pop of Falcon flying, essentially. This is all right. All right, let's get ready for a little bit of a hot take here. Starting off with the street art Stan Lee. What the f***? Like, we talked about this, which feels like just a couple weeks ago of predicting who it was going to be. And I thought it was set in stone that it was going to be one of the ones that we talked about. And we were wrong. It's Stan Lee. I mean, I get it. This will probably be the best selling one because it's Stan Lee. But also, it, this whole lineup was stupid. And I hope Funko learns their lesson that they should never do anything like this ever again. Then we have the Spider-Man Miles Morales pops. I don't know. They just seem like stuff I've already seen before. Deadpool pops. Don't like them. The dino pool's all right. And I also like the fact that they did the eye with the magnifying glass. Yeah, that's all right. Still don't like the lineup. And then we have these infinity warps. I feel like I've seen a lot of these already too. And then the Falcon. Yay. Trust me, guys. I'm a fan of Marvel, but I'm so sick of Marvel pops. There's nothing new ever. Let's move on to some more better reveals, aka day five reveals of movies. So kicking off with the movie reveals, we got ourselves kicking off for the pop director's lineup is Spike Lee, which is expected to release as early as June 2021. 
Then we got ourselves two pops for the Fast 9 movie that's coming out soon, in which we have Dominic Toretto and Jacob Toretto, in which these are expected to release as early as April 2021. Then we have a wave of pops for Bram Stoker's Dracula, which we got ourselves here, Van Helsing, Young Dracula, an armored Dracula with his helmet or mask on, which will be a Funko Shop exclusive, an armored Dracula without his helmet or mask on, that'll be a common. Then we got ourselves normal Dracula with a one in six bloody chase in which these are expected to release as early as April 2021. And then we have pops for the movie Cool Runnings, which we got ourselves Santa Coffee and Irving Blitzer, in which these are expected to release as early as May 2021. Then we got pops for the movie White Men Can't Jump, which we got ourselves Sydney, Billy Hoyle, and then a Sydney and Billy two pack that will be exclusive to Target. And these are expected to release as early as April 2021. Then we have pops for the movie The Mummy, which we got ourselves Rick O'Connell, Evelyn Carahan, and then Imhotep, which these are expected to release as early as April 2021. And then last but not least for the movies lineup, we got ourselves a brand new wave of the Goonies pops, which we got ourselves Mikey with map data with the punch glove, a new variant of sloth chunk. And then we got two exclusive pops, which we got ourselves brand, which will be a target exclusive. And then sloth with the tub of ice cream, which will be a Walmart exclusive. And these are expected to release as early as May, 2021. So kicking off with Spike Lee, I have no freaking clue who this guy is. I know that a lot of people are saying he doesn't deserve a pop because I guess he's supposedly a racist. So I don't know the backstory behind that, but the overall detail looks pretty cool. This seems like it could have been a Funko Shop exclusive limited to an X amount of pieces, but if it ends up being a common, I guess it's cool. Then we got ourselves Fast 9 Pops, which I don't know about anyone else, but I only see one pop on this screen. Which, yes, for those that don't know, Jacob Toretto is played by Mr. Do-do-do-do, John Cena himself. These are all right. I was expecting that they should make actual Fast and the Furious Pops because this year does mark the 20th anniversary of when the first movie was released. But, I mean, Fast 9 is coming out soon, so I guess release at least a couple pops for that movie. But I was hoping they would make some nice Fast and the Furious pop rides. Bram Stoker's Dracula. These are all right. I know people are complaining that there should have been a girl character, which I guess that's true in the case of the fact that there is one Van Helsing pop and five Dracula pops. I'm not really a fan of, you know, the mask and unmasked exclusive common variants. And that chase is lazy as hell, in my opinion. The only difference is it's just a slight hand movement with what looks to be a knife in his hand that is only partially bloody. I think it would have been better just to have a ton of blood all over his face. Cool Runnings. This is amazing. I am so glad that there is going to be Cool Runnings Funko Pops. It's cool if they started off with these two, and I can't wait for a potential pop rides in the future where they actually have the bobsled. Whenever I watch the Winter Olympics and people would ask me, what sport do you look forward to the most to watch? And you would think because we were Canadian, I would say, oh, it's hockey. But no, it's bobsledding. And it's all because of this movie. This movie is awesome. This is based on the true story of the Jamaican bobsledding team for the 1988 Calgary Winter Olympics. White men can't jump. I have not seen this movie yet, so I can't really give my overall opinion of these. These are all right. Then we got ourselves The Mummy. These pops are pretty cool. The fact that we have a pop for, wow, I can't even remember his name. I had his name, Br Brendan Fraser, I think it is. Mr. Jungle Book there. That's his character, Rick O'Connell. And ladies and gentlemen, we have here the best, I don't care what anyone says, these are the best reveals for the movie's lineup. A new wave of the Goonies. So great, the amount of detail. And when I heard rumors of these and I read the list of like rumored pops and I read Chunk, I'm like, I swear, they better have Chunk doing the truffle shuffle. And ladies and gentlemen, he is. And it's so amazing the way they have the detail of his expression doing it. And you even can see a pink blemish on his cheeks to show that he's like mad and embarrassed to be doing the truffle shuffle. And it looks fantastic. It's cool that they made some new sloth pops because the other ones are super expensive and the exclusives are cool. Spike Lee, this is all right. But yeah, I could see where there could be a little bit of controversy over whether he deserves a pop or not. I think it looks good though. Then the F9 pops. These are all right. 
I could see these selling to fans of the franchise, but I could definitely also see these sitting on shelves and eventually being some of those pops you see that go for just ridiculously cheap prices in a few years from now. The Dracula pops. These are cool. I kind of want to get one of the Draculas, maybe the Chase one, just to put it next to the Count Burns from the Treehouse of Horror lineup, considering this Dracula is what that is a spoof of. Cool runnings. These are super cool. Yeah, bobsledding is really cool to watch during the Winter Olympics. I mean, I'm a huge hockey guy, so that's usually what gets me most pumped. But I definitely do love watching bobsledding. And I mean, the story's amazing. John Candy with a cool new Funko Pop. I don't know if he's ever had a Funko Pop before. I don't recall. Yes, he had the, it's from the Stripes lineup. It's ox covered in mud in that oh, lineup right. with Bill Murray. Yeah, Yeah. right. Okay, he's had one before, but this is still a cool version. And I don't know, this is like one of the top three movies that I think of when I think of him. Then White Men Can't Jump. I feel like I've seen this movie at some point. Like it was, was probably just playing on TV. Wesley Snipes though, that, that's funny. <laughs> then The Mummy. These are really cool. I like this. I like The Mummy. What did you call Brennan Fraser, Mr. Jungle Book? Well, yeah, because Brendan Fraser was in Jungle Book. He's Tarzan. Oh, wait. <laughs> I can't believe I just... Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> uh, I didn't even have to say anything. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I meant to say Mr. Tarzan, not Mr. Jungle Book. Um, He's not even Tarzan either, isn't he? George of the Jungle? Oh, my f***. <laughs> it is George... I could see where the mistakes are. It's about jungle boys with no clothes on. So exactly. Yeah. Okay. This is cool. I like seeing a Brendan Fraser pop. That's for sure. Then the Goonies. Oh, this is awesome. I love this. The Goonies is one of my all time favorite movies. I'm sure a lot of people can say that because it's just such a classic and great movie for anybody to watch. And all of these pops look amazing. As soon as this got announced, I took a look at these pops and I went, wow. And then I Googled the original set of Goonie Pops and I laughed because it is night and day how much better these pops are than the original ones. I don't even know if I could pick one that'd be my favorite. I don't even know. I like them all and I will definitely be getting all six of these pops. All right, so we're going to move on to day six and will be the last day that we talk about, which is the TV set of pops. Although they did mix some retro toys in this reveal of announcements. So kicking off the office lineup of pops, which if I'm not mistaken, this is actually the first ever entire wave of pops that are exclusives only. So kicking off, we got ourselves Phyllis Vance, Oscar Martinez, and two variants of Ryan Howard, one with his dark hair and one with his blonde tips from the later seasons, in which all of those are going to be Walmart exclusives. Then we got ourselves basketball attired Michael Scott, and we got ourselves Dwight Schrute in his basketball attire with the mask with a one in six shirtless chase, which those are going to be Chalice Collectibles exclusives. Then we got ourselves Creed Pops, which we got ourselves Creed with the Monk Beans, which will be an EB game slash GameStop exclusive. And then we got ourselves a normal Creed Pop with a one in six bloody Halloween costume chase, which will be both specialty series exclusives. And those are expected to release as early as February 2021. Then we got ourselves a G.I. Joe versus Transformers mystery box where you have a chance of getting two out of the four pops that are shown on here. And you get a keychain and a decal and a pin set involved. If I'm not mistaken, it comes in a lunch box as its box and not an actual cardboard box. But anyways, the four pops that can be found in this mystery box, we got ourselves new variants of Optimus Prime and Megatron with weapons in their hands from Transformers, obviously. And then we got ourselves Duke and Cobra Commander from G.I. Joe. And these are expected to release as early as February 2021. And then we got ourselves a separate wave of G.I. Joe Pops, which we got ourselves Snake Eyes with Dog, which will be a Funko Shop exclusive. And then common pops of The Baroness, Scarlet, Storm Shadow, and then a normal variant of Snake Eyes, in which these are expected to release as early as May 2021. Then a brand new wave of the Umbrella Academy pops in which the set we have here, we have Luther, Vanya, number five, Baby Pogo, Allison, Klaus, Ben, Diego, and then a glow in the dark target exclusive of Vanya, which these are expected to release as early as April, 2021. 
Then for the retro toys lineup for specifically the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, we got ourselves an Entertainment Earth exclusive six inch Krang, which this is expected to release as early as March 2021. Then we have pops for the TV series Bewitched, which we got ourselves Endora and Samantha Stevens, which these are expected to release as early as February 2021. Then we got pops for the TV series Frasier, which we got ourselves Martin with Eddie, Frasier, and then Niles, which these are expected to release as early as May 2021. Then we got pops for the TV series Happy Days, which we got ourselves Arnold, Richie, Fonzie, Chachi, and Joni, which these are expected to release as early as May 2021. And then last but not least for today's podcast is pops for the TV series His Dark Materials, which we got ourselves Lyra, Lee Scoresby, Miss Culture, and Lord Ezreal, in which those are expected to release as early as April 2021. So kicking off with the office set, I'm ecstatic that there's going to be a nice office wave that has a lot of newer characters. We finally get a Phyllis, an Oscar, a Ryan, and especially a Creed. What's worse than having one Walmart exclusive? Four Walmart exclusives. It's going to suck when these ship out and they're all damaged boxes. I kind of find it weird that Ryan has two variants going to the same retailer. I feel like they should have sent one to Walmart and one to another, or I shouldn't even say Walmart at all. Walmart shouldn't even have exclusives to begin with. The Phyllis is awesome. And of course the Oscar is awesome. I love the Michael Scott and how they actually made like the basketball posed pop for that. The Dwight is awesome that it has the shirtless chase and you have the one with the basketball on the side. My only gripe is that it's Chow's collectibles exclusive in that every time Chow's does their own exclusives and it has a chase, you have to buy a six pop bundle in order to get it. And it's $90 US plus shipping. I will wait until I will see a eBay listing for a chase. And then we got Creed, which was a pain in the ass to get that damn chase. I looked on so many retailers and by the time I go and, you know, click to go check out, sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out, so many websites. And then finally, I found a retailer, got the chase along with a Jim Helper book face chasers I don't have yet. So I can't wait to get that also. And then the Creed with the monk beans, I felt like it was a bit of a missed opportunity that they should have made this a scented pop. The Transformers versus G.I. Joe Mystery Box. This is not too bad. I felt like they should have made different characters for Transformers instead of doing remolds of Optimus Prime and Megatron, but with a little tiny accessory at the end of them. And then you have, I think, two new characters for G.I. Joe, which is pretty cool also. Then you got the normal G.I. Joe Pops, which if I'm not mistaken, I think the name of the dog is Timberwolf from what I've seen in the comments. Pretty cool that you get a little two for one deal with that Funko Shop exclusive. The other pops are pretty cool. I'm not really a fan of the normal snake eyes as it is. So having the Funko Shop exclusive with a little dog with it is pretty cool, though. Umbrella Academy Pops. These look fantastic. Loved the show. And this baby Pogo looks 10 times better than the original Pogo that they made for season one. And of course, I need to get that Klaus pop because I never got Klaus from season one. Still looking for Klaus, by the way. But this is so awesome. I love how his eyes are closed. And I'm really excited to see what that glow in the dark Vanya looks like, especially because like the middle of her glows in the dark also, which will look insane if it's pulled off the way that this glam shot is. Then we got ourselves Krang, which a good thing about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles lineup is that they make newer characters instead of just doing remolds of like the four Ninja Turtles. So it's cool that they're doing Krang. Always excited to see some new faces, especially when we got Metalhead. I wonder if whatever's inside Krang is like a little tiny separate pop that you can just pull out of there or it's just going to be glued in there. Then we got Bewitched, which I don't really have much to say about this, except the fact that these on a technicality were already announced, but these were announced in 2019's London Toy Fair. So it's been two years since we've heard about these pops, but I think the license got removed and they had to go through another licensing phase. And these are all right. Frasier. I know a lot of people are pumped for pops for this show. I like the one with the dog, of course, because I'm a huge fan of two for one deals. Then we got Happy Days, which this is awesome. I remember watching the Happy Days show. Such a cool show. And of course, Fonzie, so cool. And then his Dark Materials. I have no idea what this show is. I haven't heard of about it until when these were revealed last night as we were recording this podcast. These are pretty cool. All of these pops look to be two for one deal pops. They all have some sort of animal with them. I like the little what looks to be a tiger of some sorts with the one character. I don't remember his name. 
new office pops these are awesome yeah we have phyllis we have oscar creed is so hilarious i love that they're doing three different creeds i think he deserves it especially because there's been so much hype around creed getting a pop so getting three i think is deserving and then ryan i don't understand like i get it why they're doing a variant where he's got the blonde hair but why does he not have a wolf shirt on in one of these variants just doesn't make sense it it would be a lot better that way I do love the Chalice Collectibles, Michael Scott and the Dwight, because these pops are from my favorite episode of The Office. I would say it's probably my favorite episode. And I'm kind of surprised that they didn't do a Jim Helper in his basketball uniform. And then obviously me and DK have kind of talked about this, which we think will be coming soon, hopefully. But the infamous Stanley with the infamous dribbling the basketball That would be so cool. Just please don't put it in a sideways box. But yeah, these Chalice Collectibles Pops are awesome. I definitely need to get these three. The G.I. Joe and Transformers box. This is kind of cool. Definitely has a big variety of stuff in it for some different fandoms, whether it's G.I. Joe or Transformers, which normally it's the same people that like those things anyways. So I could see people really, really liking this. And getting it in a lunchbox is awesome. I am a pretty big fan of lunchboxes. I own like five or six vintage lunchboxes. So this would kind of be cool to have, but I don't really collect the G.I. Joes and I haven't decided on how many of the Transformers I want to collect, so I would probably pass on this one. Then the G.I. Joe lineup. This is all right. These are cool, and I know people love the G.I. Joes, so they will definitely be getting bought quite a bit. Umbrella Academy. These look great as well. Yeah, the Klaus looks really good with the eyes closed. Krang. I think it's finally time for me to collect all of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles pops because of this pop. I love the Krang. And to answer your question about that little guy inside the stomach there, that is Krang. Krang is the brain. It would be really cool, though, if he was able to be removed. But from the glam shot, uh, that's kind of a toss up. Bewitched? Yeah, I thought for sure I remembered talking to my mom about how they were getting bewitched pops. And then, yeah, it just never came to fruition. But it's cool that we're getting announcements again. Hopefully we actually get them this time. Frasier, these are really, really cool as well. I remember watching Frasier as a young child. These look great and it actually brings back a lot of memories. I'll probably get all three of these pops. And speaking about getting all of the pops, I will definitely be getting all these Happy Day pops. This whole lineup's really, really awesome. And then his Dark Materials. I don't know what this show is, but I'm very intrigued by these pops. And I love that about pops that I haven't seen the show of because it's like, huh, maybe I have to check this out now because these pops look really, really cool. All right, so now we're going to move on to our top 10 list of Funko Pops for the month of January 2021. Of course, we are still in the middle of January as we're recording this, so we will miss some pops. Obviously, that'll be day seven, eight, and nine of Funko Fair 2021, which that'll be moved to next week's podcast with our segment, The Update, which we update this top 10 list. But anyways, MD Shady, number 10 on your list for January 2021. My number 10 is the Valentine's Day Darth Vader. I think that out of the five now pops that are in that kind of lineup, I think the Vader is kind of the best one. I really, really love that hot pink color. Chewbacca was definitely a close second, but the Vader was definitely the best one. And I love the idea of these pops. These are great holiday pops, if that's what you want to call them. All right, coming in at number 10, which I'm going to give this to Tony Chimmel for this one. Number 10, pretty great looking pop. It was one of the more hyped pops of this. They kind of had equal hype, I guess, a lot of these pops. But I think some of the most talked about pops involved Edge and probably I think like Eddie Guerrero as like the top two compared to the other ones, even the in-ring moments. I think that the Edge looks awesome, especially with the detail of his tattoos that are going on with this pop. This Sunday is the Royal Rumble and he is entering it. So could he be the Royal Rumble winner this weekend? We'll have to see. 
Moving on to number nine, I have Creed, but it is actually the GameStop exclusive. I feel like that's the best one. I like the chase, but at the same time, I don't know if I'll ever get my hands on it, whereas I know I can get that GameStop one. And I do like that one. I like his hair in that one a lot as well. Coming in at number nine on my list, it is Psyduck. Now, reason being, Psyduck was the most hyped Pokemon as terms to that set. But personally, I wasn't really a fan of it compared to Meowth, which I felt like didn't get much love as terms to hype. And I don't think the detail is all that great compared to a lot of the Pokemon pops. I felt like it's a little overrated in my opinion, which is why it's low on my list. Coming in at number eight, I have the Six Path Sage Mode from the Naruto Ship It In lineup. I think this one just has crazy detail and I don't know. I just really, really like that pop, even though I probably won't get it. Number eight on my list is number five from the Umbrella Academy. Although personally, my favorite pop has to be Klaus because that's my favorite character in the series. A lot of people were really hyping about that number five pop, which I think it's understandable because number five kind of like stole the show, I guess, as terms to season two. He did a lot of cool things in that series. So I can see where the hype is coming from with that. But it's also low because it wasn't like my favorite pop in that lineup. Like I even think like the Pogo was better than the number five. Moving on to number seven. I have the Chalice Collectibles, Michael Scott giving her a slam dunk, or at least what he can do for a slam dunk. Like I explained, this is definitely my favorite episode of The Office, and I definitely hope they make kind of all of the basketball players from that episode. Michael Scott is super cool. All right, coming in at number seven on my list is the Entertainment Earth exclusive six inch Krang. I think the detail looks really nice on it and a little personal reaction because I like seeing the different characters for Ninja Turtles instead of seeing the same ones remade into different variants. In that aspect, that's why I deserve to be on my top 10 list. Moving on to number six, you think you know me. Edge is my number six. It was a tough decision because I really, really do want to see a like ruthless aggression era Edge with the trench coat and maybe with that rated R spinner belt. But getting a modern day Edge is really, really cool as well because three years ago, that's something I never thought I'd be able to say, to be honest. And it's so great that he is back. Coming in at number six, it is Meowth from the Pokemon lineup. Pop looks great in detail. I had a big personal reaction for this because this was one of my most requested pops for the Pokemon lineup and it's finally happening. The hype is what kind of brings it down. If there was more hype, it definitely would have made the top five. All right, moving on to number five. My number five is Meowth. Yeah, it's it's a great Pokemon pop. Like I said, if eventually we do get some human characters like Jesse and James, these would go so awesome together. And then maybe one day we'll get a wild effect. I'm looking so far into the future of these Pokemon pops, but I mean, why not do it? Coming in at number five on my list is Dino Pool. There was a lot of hype for this pop, like a lot more hype than a lot of the pops that were announced during Funko Fair. The detail is very awesome. And then personally, I just, I love the design. I remember hearing the rumors and I didn't think it would end up being as good as it is. Speaking of that, coming in at number four on my list is the Common Sloth from the Goonies. I mean, so iconic. I do like the one where he has the ice cream in his hands, but the pirate outfit with the Superman shirt, even though he doesn't have the logo, is just so iconic when you hear that, hey, you guys. Uh, just thinking about it brings me back to the first time I ever watched the movie. Hey, you guys. My number four is also the common sloth. Exactly the points that you made. Such a cool moment. And the ice cream one, it's okay. It does have a bit of detail, but I just found like just for memorable moments sake, the common is just a little better than the Walmart exclusive. Coming in at number three, I have the Chalice Collectibles, Dwight Schrute Chase with no shirt on. Oh, so funny. Keep saying it. I love this episode and it's because there's just so many funny moments in the episode and Dwight's definitely a funny guy. So he comes in at number three for me. 
Coming in at number three on my list is the EB Games slash GameStop exclusive Eddie Guerrero. I think this pop looks fantastic for the way it was. They could have easily made this pop not the greatest, honestly, but with the hairstyle, the facial hair, and kind of almost the pose that he's about to do, awesome. And they added a WrestleMania 20 pin, which is pretty cool. It's well-deserved. Eddie Guerrero, viva la raza. Let's see you number two. My number two is Krang from TMNT. I mean, this thing's going to look great. If that Krang comes out of the little stomach spot, that would also be super, super nice. Krang is super awesome and definitely makes it to number two. All right, number two on my list is Chunk from The Goonies. This pop is so awesome. Definitely the best pop of the Goonies lineup, in my opinion, just because the truffle shuffle moment, so funny. The fact that they basically were able to pull off that facial expression and kind of the embarrassment in his face in Funko Pop form was just so awesome. And finally, we move on to the number one spot, and that is Auto Man from The Simpsons. It's so awesome. I love everything about this pop. I love The Simpsons lineup, and I really hope they continue to pump out amazing pops just like Auto Man. My number one is the specialty series exclusive one in six bloody chase of Creed Bratton. This pop looks great from what I'm looking at in a more concept art form. And a lot of people have been wanting a Creed pop for a while. And a lot of people have been requesting for bloody Creed. It's actually been one of those requested variants. And just the way they've applicated the blood, at least in this glam shot slash concept art is going to look awesome. And I can't wait to own this pop. But anyways, guys, that is going to be the end of this week's podcast. If you enjoyed this week's episode of a Funko Popcast, make sure to smash that like button. Comment in the comment section below on what your favorite pops have been for the month of January 2021. And let us know your favorite pops that were revealed for Funko Fair 2021. Press that subscribe button for more content like this podcast and any other videos we do in the future. And press the little bell beside it to be notified of when that future content gets released. And also, if you haven't yet, follow us on all of our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at a Funko Podcast. It'll be listed in the description below. But anyways, guys, thank you for listening to this week's podcast, and we hope to see you guys on next week's edition of a Funko Podcast. One, two, three, I'm out of here. I'm Jungle Book Tarzan, Brennan Fraser. Peace in, peace out. <laughs>